Forest fans, Robin here, back once more with a book review for you. Yes, this is another book review, another five reasons to read. And today I'm actually going to be bringing a Black Library book to the five readers to read fold. I haven't read any Black Library books that I particularly enjoyed, as I mentioned in my review of the new Warhammer Adventure series for children. And on the back of that, uh, the people at the Black Library very kindly challenged me to read a couple of Black Library books and see if I enjoyed them. And they let me choose what I wanted. They gave me some suggestions. And the first one they sent uh, was Eisenhorn by Dan Abnett. Now, I chose this one because I know it's kind of seen as the pinnacle of Black Library fiction. And if I didn't enjoy it, then almost certainly I wasn't going to enjoy the rest. So did I enjoy this? Yes, I absolutely did. This is a great book. Uh, I would thoroughly recommend Eisenhorn if you haven't read it. I know lots of you already have read it out there. But anyway, here are my five reasons to read Eisenhorn by Dan Abnett. Number one. Number one is that it works on a personal level. This is a small-scale tale in a, in a grand universe, in the Warhammer 40k universe. It's a personal tale. Eisenhorn and his band of merry men and women on a quest to find something. What? Who knows? We don't quite know what it is. It's one of these kind of tales evolving. We're not sure. It starts with a set piece. We start on a ship and Eisenhorn kills his, uh, his long-time enemy that he's been tracking. But is there more to this? Well, of course there is. There's a whole novel more to it. And we gradually learn what it is that Eisenhorn's up against. Um, as we go. So it's a very small, personal level tale with good, strong characters in it. The ensemble cast is really good. Um, some of the bad guys are great too. And so it's it's an enjoyable tale for that reason. Number two, well, it's a good mode of lore from the 40,000 universe, um, but then it draws in its own bits and pieces, which I guess has become lore. I mean, this, this novel is 10, getting towards 15 years old now, so it, it has become lore and become, you know, it is canon. Uh, but it, I, I feel the problem that a lot of the 40k books have, and they possibly have it as a result of books like Eisenhorn, is that they feel the weight of this lore on their shoulders and they... There's a lot of kind of technical, not technical terms, but a kind of a lot of terms of, of that are used in the games, and, and 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 it kind of feels like they're constrained by the uh, framework in which they're working. So the weapons are all called by their name, described by how they look or how they feel. They're kind of described as heavy bolter with a cutter kind of thing. Well, they're not quite that bad, but you you kind of it kind of has that weight of the 40k universe bearing down on it, and this one doesn't. It kind of assumes that, of course, the weight was, as I said, the weight was less when the book was written, but I feel that this book really kind of stands on its own, and it almost, there are obvious references, it's obviously the 40,000 universe, but in many ways you wouldn't know uh, that you were right, this was written set in the 40,000 universe, whereas I think often it really bears the stamp of it being a sort of wider concept, sort of, as I say, weighed down by, by the law around it. Number three, number three is that it isn't military sci-fi. Kind of following on from number two, really, I think a lot of these books kind of fall fall under the fact that they, they're large, sort of, well, the ones I've read anyway, I haven't read that many, I've struggled to read them, but they're sort of much larger pieces with, with lots of armies moving around, and, and I don't know that... Um, where the writers aren't up to the job, the ones I've read, they just don't feel like good stories. They just, again, they can down. They have the weight of the all the sort of having to have all the chapters and the kind of sergeants and what uh, lieutenants and all the weapons and everything and all the ships kind of mentioning them, and it just feels like it's not very free. It doesn't feel very natural. Whereas this, being a much smaller scale personal tale. It, it feels like a, a natural task. And there are some bigger ships and some wider Imperium things in the book, but it's not driven by this kind of full-scale military onslaught. I think the book is better for that. Number four is the tight plotting. Now, the book is really tightly plotted, which, again, well, I have to say, some most of the ones I read, I haven't got far enough in, into them to find out whether it was tightly plotted or not, because I gave up before I got halfway through. But this one, uh, there's some twists, there's some turns, um, there's some obvious bad guys, there's some perhaps less obvious bad guys, or people who, or they might be bad guys, but actually turn out not to be bad guys, or maybe the other way around, who knows. Um, but it's quite, it's very well done, and you, you, there are a few surprises in there, everything kind of links together really quite nicely, and so um, there is this kind of MacGuffin that uh, Eisenhorn ends up after, so it's a little bit cliched in that respect, there's like a thing they need to get, 
Um, that's what's the driving force of the plot. But everything else around it is plotted really tightly and it's really interesting. It's all nicely set up for book two. This is a trilogy, of course, and of course I know many of you have read it, but I haven't. I definitely want to read the next book in the series because I want to find out what happens next to Eisenhorn and um, and the kind of where the narrative is going to go. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, and the f my final reason, and probably my favourite reason for enjoying this book over the other Black Library books, is that the, the language is not too overblown. Yes, I found a few too many uses of the word lambent. Black Library books, for me, they get they get bogged down, as well as being bogged down by the law, they get bogged down by using really long words and complicated phrases when they don't need to. It just makes it really challenging to read. Not so much that I don't understand what the words are, but just, just don't need to use them. It pulls you out of the reality of that you're reading, whereas this doesn't really happen here. You know, I mean, it still has a slightly overblown use of language. I think that is the kind of house style, but uh, Dan Abnett handles it really well. And he doesn't. He doesn't. It doesn't feel forced. It just feels like the natural writing style. But the book is still easy to read. It still flows, and it's still you know you. I'm on the edge of my seat, kind of stuff reading this. But I wanted to know what was going to happen. Have to read the next chapter to find out. It kind of pulls you through. Whereas I think sometimes the the the, the long over multisyllabic words from uh, that are often used. They just they pull you out of it. And you just think, well, I don't really care. I don't really care what's going to happen next. But I never felt like that with this book. I was really impressed with it. So, Black Library team, you are correct. I have enjoyed this book, as I know you knew I would. I did indeed. I'm looking forward to trying to get the second one. I'll do that at some point in the future. I have been sent another book to read, and it's Honor Bound by Rachel Harrison. I'm really looking forward to reading that. I think she's the first female Black Library novelist. I'm really interested to see how that pans out. And I know that the character at the centre of that novel is very popular, so I'm hoping that I enjoy that. I will report back as and when I've read it. But until then, do let me know what you thought of Eisenhorn. Do let me know what other Black Library books I should possibly read. People have suggested them in the past. I'd say I've always, always, always got books on the go. I haven't got time to read everything. But if you if you think I should particularly read something after I finish the Eisenhorn, after I finish Otter Bound, then do let me know. Um, and I'll, we'll see where we go. Until then, enjoy whatever it is you're reading. Do let me know what you're reading. Happy to hear that. I would love to know what you're all reading. So do let me know. And I shall see you soon. Bye.